thank you so much for taking time to do this. Um, are you still in doing European tour dates right now? No, we finished. Um, it was, we were supposed to start our tour in September and then we, a few festivals offered us to play uh, what seemed like a good idea at the time because it was far ahead, but it was a bit rushed. But uh, we, we did maybe eight, eight, nine shows in Europe and we stopped and usually I, I enjoy the summer, but this time I want the summer to really end quickly to be able to play in September again. I bet. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what kind of emotions do you even go through getting back out on the road again after so many years of just being hunkered down, you know? Yeah, yeah. it must be. I mean, I'm sure it's to all the musicians you talk to, it must be... It must all be relieved and yeah. and uh, yeah, we were we were really ecstatic about uh, playing shows. It was it was really uh, it all made sense because we at some point when we were in the studio, we were not even sure when the record would come out, how it would, uh, and even though you you knew of our band starting to tour, you we knew that we would see the light at the end of the tunnel but uh it didn't seem that real and then when you start playing live you realize how much you missed it you we we knew we missed it but it's uh it took with uh, yeah with the pandemic it took a different uh it was it was a different level of uh emotions this time playing live um before we talk about the new record i think we're talking about live shows it'd be cool to dive back into that um you always look like the whole band has such a blast playing live. There's usually a moment at the end where you kind of get into the audience and like feel that energy again. Um, so it's I nice to do you it. Really missed touring and that all that stuff is like how you, it's real for you guys in the moment, right? The excitement of playing live. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, I drew, so we're, f we're four in the band, but then our, our, our drummer and our keyboard player, uh, who's been, they've been with us for maybe 15 years. When, when we go in the studio, they have their own projects and they tour and they, so they were with us and but they said like, you'll see, it's, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be great. You're, you're, you don't, you won't realize how much you, you miss this. Yeah. And they were, they were, they were really happy, but I think they were also surprised to see us so uh, enthused with the with 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 playing live. Yeah. And 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 usually when you start an album cycle, even though there's just one song out yet, but the when we play in September, we'll play, you know, a lot of songs of new songs. Um, it felt you're a little bit anxious about how people will perceive the new songs, how how. Uh, this time it there was zero anxiety. I mean, yeah, we were just we were just relieved to to play. Yeah, I'm guessing that your fans had the same reception too. I mean, I love hearing new songs on a tour. It's the first time you get to hear, you know, the songs that you listen to all the time. But then there's nothing like the live performance of it. And then when you go out on tour with Phoenix, your light shows like the thought that's put into that is always pretty incredible. And from what I've been watching from where you've toured these last couple of times, yeah. Europe, oh my gosh. Like you guys are bringing it again with like a full on a feast for like your. Yeah. Years. I mean, it's right. super fun. It's part, it's part of the making an album for us is also thinking how they're going to be presented live and the music video and all these things. And, uh, we're really bringing a, some sort of Italian digital opera on stage. And we thought at first when we, when we made this idea, cause we, I went to see a few operas and I went to see ballet and I saw like how, you know, how a stage is built since for it's how it's been built for hundreds of years. And it just made sense to, turn this but you make this in a digital way that that all of a sudden you're using all this craft and all these these tricks that people use for yeah for for a very long time and 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 uh 
with with all the technology now you can make it really exciting and really uh, of a night trick like just eye candy for everyone yeah. <laughs> on top of music and it's super yeah it's it's I was surprised when we had the idea that people, our friend who's our tour manager and production manager who's been with us for, since we started, since we're like 16, uh, he's, um, he's saying, yeah, we can, we can do this. You know, it's like in Spinal Tap when he draws the, <laughs> he, he draws the thing is like, yeah, no problem, I got this. I was like, are you sure you got this? Because it seems like it's impossible to make this happen. I was worried about the dimensions I were, I was worried about, yeah, I was worried about a spinal tap. Uh, <laughs> a spinal uh, tap moment? Yeah, but somehow it's not like that, so yeah. Yeah, every time I go to a show and there's next level effects, I can't help but think back like decades ago, like if you wanted red, blue, and orange lights on stage, you had to put the film in front of like the can that has just a regular light, and now it's like, almost anything you can imagine. If you got the right people working with you, it seems like they can dream up and make it happen, so. Yeah, and and what's nice, I mean, what's nice is that uh, it's really for the band, it's, it's an opera thing. So it's really for the stage and for the band and the music, uh, it's not, because I went to a few shows where, you know, the novelty is just the lights or the novelty is just the production. And that made me, that made me really depressed, you know, just because I'd rather hear just new songs with uh, the house lights than uh, than seeing uh, a best of with with a great production or or so it's mostly about playing new songs for us. Yeah. But somehow this time on this tour, it feels like we have, you know, that that sometimes planets are aligned and things happen, and so it's it's nice that we get we get to do both which is i mean i grew up i grew up going to shows where i was yeah i was the most exciting about the new things you know when i would see prince or the pixies or or uh, or my believe valentine or it was always the i wanted to hear the new songs mm -hmm. the most and there, there is the fear in the band of like uh it doesn't really matter if people don't react as much to the new songs, but as long as us, we are, and I think they will react to it, I'm hoping, but they, as long as us, we're the most excited to play the new things. That's, that's what's important. Speaking of new songs, we've been playing Alpha Zulu, obviously. And at some point you must have told somebody that um, the song was inspired by a plane ride where there was turbulence and you heard the pilot get on the speaker and did he sing yeah. Alpha Zulu? And so now I read that everywhere. So I was wondering if there's like more to that story. Is that a true story? Yeah, well, the, the story is that I was on a small plane in Central America and uh, the plane, when, when the plane is full, they sit, you get the seat, the co-pilot seat. And uh, so you get the headphones. And um, if you're scared of flying, it's usually a good thing because it, you see that someone's in control and you hear that there's someone guiding you. And, mm -hmm. But when things are, don't go really well, it's more stressful. <laughs> and I would hear the control tower and people panicking. And, uh, and I would hear... Yeah, Alpha Zulu is a tale, the name of the plane, I guess the last two letters of the plane. So I would hear Alpha Zulu, Alpha Zulu, uh, you know, the, 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 all the, and when we went back to the studio uh, to record the album, I think maybe nine months later, or eight, nine months later, we all, all, we've always worked with stream of consciousness. We've always made music by not and so things pop out and you don't I'm not really sure it took me a, a yeah it took me i don't know maybe a, a few hours to figure out like where is that from oh yeah okay now i remember <laughs> so when you sing it you don't have that panicked feeling anymore that you did when you were riding shotgun on the plane hearing it i think it's a catharsis you say catharsis catharsis in the french is the same word catharsis and um, yeah, I think I use it that way, that, that uh, 
that yeah the fear is gone but the memory is is still alive yeah <laughs> the um new album was recorded in the loop yeah that, yeah was that like a dream of yours to always yes do? yes it was a dream i i remember walking uh, in the gardens of the Louvre with Chris when we were like, when we just moved to Paris, so we were 19. And uh, I remember seeing all these empty rooms that we were pointing at, uh, like, what's going on here? No, no one's in those rooms because they are like, you know, under the roof or under, uh, and we're like, I, how come they, are, they don't allow musicians to be there or painters or you know, something that's not just a museum, but that's for, that's to create something new. And somehow they let us, they let us use a, uh, this big space inside the Louvre, which was incredible. And the fact that uh, when the pandemic happened, we, the Louvre was closed. So we happened to be on our own in this big space at night uh, with, art that was not curated you know it was a messy all the arts well it, it it felt a little bit like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark yeah you know, the, Ooh, the, all the boxes yes and and it was more inspiring to see art this way you know in a messy uh mysterious um also messy the timeline is messy because you'd had things that well that had nothing in common and it, that was that was really special how that affected how some of your sounds were how some of the songs came together on the album then i would think i think it gives you a little bit of freedom you know when we've always tried to escape professional studios or like spaces that are made for music because the gold records on the wall can be intimidating or can give you a, a bad, can lead you in the wrong direction or, and uh, I think what, I'm still trying to understand what it did to the album. I see the, I see what, how the album is a bit of a Frankenstein of an album because every song is different. And I guess that's a direct inspiration of being in that, those messy rooms with, you know, a bit of, uh, things that don't really make sense but um there's also maybe yeah it's hard it, i'm still trying to understand what it really meant to be in that space but it, it was really um yeah really felt like doing our first record a little bit maybe well there's no boundaries you know there's there's more um the inspiration can come from anywhere and you're you're not set on anything specific and you're in a place that's usually not meant for music your any sound is disturbing the peace mm -hmm. of that space but you are somehow you're allowed to to make music which is a little bit how we we grew up in versailles which is a museum in itself and that's how we felt growing up that we can't really disturb the peace as well that's one thing about museums that I always wished could change a little bit. And maybe for younger generations and for some museums, they've got forward thinking people there, but it's always so quiet that when you go enjoy art, you feel like you have to be quiet. So for you to create an album there and make all that music and then fill it up with space and energy, I always wonder like how much of that just kind of lives there, like the energy that you put in, like, you know, I don't know if you feel like that sort of thing could stay behind but well you well every day because the museum was closed we'd have to walk the entire museum to go to our studio and this i mean it was like a 10 minute walk but this 10 minute walk became like a you know it was like cleansing uh it did have a mis mystical uh and you could also choose your route, you know, you could do, depending on the floor, you could do like, if you go to the second floor, you'd see like really weird Napoleon's throne that was ripped off its imperial eagles and they put these nuts instead to like bring it back to a more humble 
so you'd have these very awkward um, uh, artifacts of history, and that that that's it's yeah. It was we. Uh, it's also similar to how our music is made a little bit because we we don't really think of who's gonna play what and all who's what instrument is going to do what we we usually it can start with a sample and then there can be drum machines or real real, real acoustic drums or or so we we also work in that the same messy uh that we are, we have this freedom of not having to use you know uh our bass player doesn't care if he plays the bass line which uh sometimes is it's in most bands it's a problem you know because <laughs> uh, or, or in the 80s if the guitar get, lead guitar wouldn't play a solo it was an, it was a problem so because we grew up the four of us together we have this freedom of like putting everything in a me- and just and just uh, choosing what what the writing right thing is for the song and not just what uh finding a formula that's that that works we like to change formulas a lot and then you work with producers and people helping you mix that also kind of get that vibe and try not to make it formulaic and just see where the songs go well this one we didn't work with some we we had a producer friend would come once in a while go Philippe Zdar would help us in the past but uh who we lost um who passed away uh three years ago so this for the for the first uh for the first time we had to we 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 had to do it ourselves even though we were we were uh um we used yeah we did use mixer on mastering for the end and we it was it was really great to work with uh we worked with manny i never know how to say his last name so i moroccan yeah manny marocain we call him so i'll say the french way um uh and um yeah he was great but we we knew we had to finish the demos in a way that was really that they were really, really done because are very close to what they're supposed to sound like. Because um, it's not like going mixing with Philippe where we would be in the studio with him for three days on one song and you could like really polish and finish a song and make it exactly the way you want. Mm -hmm. Uh, This time we had to exchange files to computers, which is less but but somehow we found someone that could really reinterpret what we had in mind and 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 do it exactly how we wanted. That's awesome. Out of all of the band members, who is the most like who has the most tech and fun pedals and gear? Like, is there one of you that is more into like collecting unique instruments or pedals, or is one of you like more into like um, the engineering part? than others it's we're very similar i mean we all have we all know we're all into it we we we've been collecting things since we are um yeah 15 14 15 but the thing that have the most we i I guess we always liked we always like to use things that have value to us but that are probably uh if you put them on ebay they're like 10 bucks <laughs> and then things that are you know for instance we bought the michael jackson's thriller board the the mixing board and so that's a, an incredible value and that has uh incredibly unique features but then we use it with this Chinese microphone uh, conference mic uh, that is yeah that is six dollars and so we it's always we're always curious about using yeah a bit of the best and a bit of the strange quality and it's it it creates unique um, uh, unique sounds yeah that's pretty fun 
one of the um, coolest things. So when I first saw you for the first time, I think when you played in Milwaukee, you played a small place like a brew pub called, I think it was Anopa or Stonefly at the time. And then I think you went out with some fans and hit up some basement shows because basement shows, well, they're still popular in Milwaukee, but in the early 2000s, it was like, if you wanted to see a new band, you would go to a basement show. Do you still, did you have- I don't think we, I don't remember our basement. Uh, I, I do, the first name you said sounds familiar. The, uh, the stone thing, I don't think it was the, I think it was the first one, but the, um, I don't remember. I'm curious because I don't know about basement culture. I mean, uh, in Milwaukee, so I have, no, I have zero knowledge of this. Um, I did read an article not long ago about how how there was a yeah how home sort of house parties were back and that bands would were playing in in those places, and that seems like that's something we did when we were. Yeah, when we were starting the band, because you, you, you were so eager to play that after playing a show in a regular venue, you were just playing wherever you could, and uh, and bring the the equipment. And I was the drummer back then, so I remember it vividly because I had to carry the drums everywhere, which is oh gosh. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, no, I don't, I don't know anything about. I don't remember a basement in Milwaukee. Mm. <laughs> in Milwaukee. Where is the strangest venue you played? Like, did you ever play like a combination concert venue, bowling alley, concert venue, pizza place yeah. back when you started? Yeah, all of these, we played, we played in front of a pool, uh, but not in even, not the Vegas Cosmopolitan where they empty the pool and then the people get in the pool. Oh, yeah. And then the people on the watching you was watching sound check from the hotel. Um, yeah, I mean, I won't get into details, but <laughs> like, well, there was there was when we played that cosmopolitan, we were a sound check, and there was a couple having sex on the thing watching us, and everybody was disturbed, looking at them, like, and they asked us to stop the sound check. Uh, that was a strange event. But we did play in Bali. We played a we played for a crowd that was behind the pool, and it was a very large pool. And then people all jumped in the pool, and somehow I jumped in the pool, and it somehow. felt like the most unsafe uh, electrical. Yeah, it was. I don't know how this venue is still. Mm if it still exists or, but I think it's not a, but you, yeah, that's the fun part is we, we played a bunch of really very strange mm -hmm. um, places. I bet. Yeah. Um, you now are a part of my holiday Christmas movie watching, you know, like around the holidays, there's always holiday films that you have to watch. Yeah. When oh, the Merry Christmas, the Merry Christmas, yeah. Yeah. That, that's become a classic because, you know, a lot of people watch it just, um, well, you want to see Bill Murray at Christmas. It makes sense. It's a, yeah. it's a, that's who you want to hang out with. He also seems like just all the stuff that he does outside of movies, like randomly showing up to bartend people's weddings. Bill Murray seems like he's just a pretty cool guy. So was that the yeah. first time you met him or did you meet him before that? Because your wife uh, was the director, right? That had worked. Yeah, out. yeah. No, they they've they've um they've known each other for a long time now. Uh I have I, what's what's really great is yeah, I'm sure I mean many many people have great stories with <laughs> so yeah that that's that's that i think that's what's more interesting than me telling a story is that everybody that meets him mm -hmm. have something that's they can tell their friends and family and they don't and no one thinks it's real because it's so it's so far out 
you know, what yeah, we do with his celebrity is to just kind of spread that kind of love and joy around randomly. Well, there are certain people that are inside the matrix, you know, they celebrity weirdly gives you that, that the thing that all of a sudden everybody was, you know, if you see a, a fire truck, then the fireman was like, we'll give you a ride. If you go to a restaurant, like, let me I'll reopen my restaurant for you. We'll cook all night and then you'll meet the, so you don't feel like a tourist in any occasion. You are the life of the party and you are, which when you play, when you visit, when you play as a band in places, you are, um, you are a little bit, you see a, just a little bit of this inside the matrix thing that all of a sudden you never want to be a tourist again. You never want to visit countries because you've had so much, uh, such a great experience uh -huh. uh, visiting those countries, playing for, you know, as a, as a, as a musician. Well, um, we've been talking for a little bit so i don't want to take up too much more of your time i have um one final question i it's just a weird question i was wondering what your childhood smelled like <laughs> that's the weirdest <laughs> question ever um what is that a question you ask everyone at the end of your show mm -hmm. yeah. uh well i'm more curious about their answers than than my because so many what what did my childhood smell like? Um, that's a that's a good question because I can't find one specific and all. Um, Is there something that just instantly popped in your head, but you don't want to say it? Well, no, I'm thinking in terms of negative more because. When I think of our basement and our studio, uh, I know we were obsessed with our studio being this very, almost like a craft rock space that was very organized and clean. And I remember going to a few studios where it just smelled like old sock and I never wanted my own studio to smell like that. Mm -hmm. So, and at the same time, we didn't want the studio to smell like candles and be ready. So um, I, I, yeah, I mean, uh, I wish you'd ask me, oh, I wish Chris was here because he's the, he would tell you right away. Let me, give me, give me 10 more seconds. You bet. What it smelled, what it smelled like. Um, When you were five, what would the smell? Well, like? no, when I when I was five, I was in. I guess maybe my I would say brillantine. Brillantine is a product that smells that is for parquet floors, mm -hmm. and it, it's a French product and it's really strong. And um, and I guess that would be the that would be the smell of my childhood because. Um, there were a lot of, you know, Versailles had all these parquet floors and they were all obsessed with, they've been around forever and they were all obsessed with keeping them clean. And uh, whenever, I, if I would visit my grandparents or this, this product was everywhere and it's, it's a really strong smell that you can, that is hard to forget. And that even when you're a five-year-old kid, you remember. So I would say that. That's a good um, and it smells a little bit also, it stays on those, uh, it stays with you, you know, it's not something when, when you start to apply it, it carries on your clothes and everything. So I would say, yeah, brillantine. I don't know, there must be a, the equivalent in the US of that product, but. I would say, yeah, pine saw is what I think my grandparents. But, yeah, but brillantine is also, there was, it's probably something you could get high on too because mm. it's it, it was pretty that strong i don't think it's legal anymore <laughs> um so i don't know what it did to me but yeah. 
whatever it did, it's working, I'm sure. Yeah, I hope awesome. so. Um, Thomas Mars, thank you for your time today. We're really excited. You're welcome. Bye, Bye Dory. <laughs>